Here's a quick breakdown of how I made this Spartan warrior character. It's got lots of tips and tricks within it, but there's a fair bit of time lapse as well, just talking through the process and the tools and the workflow that I'm using. Throughout the process, I'll be pointing to other tutorials on this channel that can guide you and help you. But if you want a more detailed, methodical approach where you can create characters like this, then do check out my character course bundle, which is currently on sale, three courses for only $30. Link in the description. So let's get started with the breakdown. So I start off the process with a quick sketch. And to make sure that the front view and the side view line up, I use guides so that I can draw the features in exactly the same place. You don't have to have references like this, but it does help a great deal. If you like these references, then you can download them in the link in the description. You can see that they're still fairly rough, but they've got the important points in there. And this is easily enough for me to trace around. I can then bring those references into Blender. This is as simple as dragging and dropping your images. I place one behind where I'm going to model and one to the side of where I'm going to model. Once the reference images are in place, I usually go to front view and I kind of blob out the shape like this with icospheres. This is just a starting point for the more detailed sculpt and it can be fairly rough. Once I've got a basic blob man, then I can go in and start refining those blobs and adding some more detail. This is still the first level of detail, so I'm just getting the basic shape outline, not any of the actual muscular tone or anything like that. It's worth having some muscular references at this point though, because we're getting the more outline shape of the muscles, kind of like a silhouette. So a basic understanding of anatomy at this point does help, and for low poly characters, you don't really have to go that far beyond this point. When it comes to things like the toes, it's a good idea to do those separately. And when it comes to the more detailed sculpt, you can just sculpt one and then copy it across several times. I gave this character one less toe, I correct that later on, so don't worry too much about that. For the fingers, I separate them out into three parts and that gives a nice shape. I of course join those parts together later on. For any hard surface modeling elements, I usually actually model those out with box modeling because that helps to keep a more rigid structure. I could have possibly done that for the helmet as well, but I was trying a different technique, which I'll talk about in a moment. So for the helmet, I blobbed out that shape and I've used the quad remesher to remesh it into this sort of topology that you can see here. It's a paid for add-on, but it really is exceptional for quickly reducing the topology count and retopologizing the shape. It doesn't do an absolutely amazing job, but it does a very good job, which you can restructure and reformat yourself. So throughout the shape, you'll see me doing that. I take these more detailed sculpts and then I reduce them down with the quad remesher so that I have more basic topology. So with using the quad remesher as a sort of retopologizing process, I can do the sculpting to get the shape and then quickly retopologize. This is a slightly quicker process, but the problem is that the topology you end up with isn't perfect. So here you can kind of see me experimenting to try and get the right topology count. And I was going to do each finger separately, then join them to the base of the hand. The problem I found was that the topology was just too bad in order to function. So joining the topology together in this way was actually very time consuming. Low poly characters often have a sort of quirky topology look to them. So angular topology that darts off in different directions and that gives them quite a lot of character. So bad topology isn't too bad, but it can cause problems if it's really bad topology and you're trying to animate. My solution to this was to actually make bigger shapes and retopologize them all as one object. So I started off in this case with just the hand. So I re-sculpted the hand shape and then retopologize that as one whole object. I can then go in and smarten up the topology if I need to, as you can see me doing here. So that became my new plan to go around making sure that I had the basic shape of each of the muscles, and then I could retopologize them into more basic topology, but keeping that shape. So now I'm going for a more detailed sculpt where I get the muscular structure. I might add in a few blobs here and there for extra muscles. It's often easier to add a completely new shape than it is to kind of sculpt out a new shape from one individual blob. So taking the back muscles, for example, I actually put in two extra blobs for the neck muscle and sculpted those separately. Because the head was under the helmet and I'm going to give that a very dark texture, I did a very rough shape of a head. And it's at this point I decided to join both the hand, the forearm and the upper arm all together and make that all one object to retopologize. And I found that a lot easier. So I improved the shape of the arm, probably adding a little bit too much detail, but I wasn't sure because this is a new process to me. And then used the quad remesher to remesh that entire arm. 
I found this approach to be surprisingly successful, so I thought I'd do the same for the whole body. I kept the arms and the feet separate just as an experiment to see whether that would make much difference, and the end result looked okay, so that's something you can do as well. When making the clothing, I start with a plane and I use a box modeling technique, but with a shrink wrap and snapping approach. So I turn the shrink wrap modifier on and I turn snapping to faces on as well. That way the clothing I'm creating will stick to the base mesh. You can see that I'm having a slight problem around the shoulder because it's a separate mesh. So the shrink wrap modifier doesn't see it so well. So in that sense, it would have been better if the body was all one object. I also use a solidify modifier to give these objects thickness. In this big sort of plate armor on the shoulder there, I applied a lot of the modifiers before finishing off the shape so I could add that extra detail around the edges. I use the same approach for the belt. I could just be using a cylinder here, but it's actually a little bit nicer if you use the snapping and shrink wrap method. It's a little bit more precise. These leathered pants or trunks, as you might call them in America, they were a little bit more complicated, so you need a little bit of knowledge of topology in order to get the right working edge flow, but it's nothing too complicated. And again, as with all these objects, the clothing, I add a solidify modifier to give it that thickness. Also, of course, with all these symmetrical objects, I'm using a mirror modifier. You do have to make absolutely sure that your center point or object center is right in the middle of your object so that mirror works. Now for these ankle straps and foot straps for the sandals, I think it might have been a little bit easier with the cylinder as they're so small and any variation won't matter as much. For the base of the sandal, I just used a plane, modeled the shape of a foot and then extruded it out. Obviously I'm simplifying the shape of a sandal quite a lot, but you can do that with these sort of low poly stylized characters. I was trying to make this model as fast as possible using a workflow that would come out with quick results. So for the texturing, I was just adding basic materials to most of the objects. I did do a slight tattoo on his arm. So I did have to do some unwrapping just for that particular object. I wanted to see how these materials would look in cycles. So I did put an HDRI in the background just to get an idea of how it's all working together. I already had a sword made, so I cheated and just brought that in. You can find out how to make that, link in the description. It's a nice, easy, low poly sword. I did have to add some new textures, but that didn't take too long. Here I'm making the really simple arm tattoo, just by drawing a line around the arm. I think it adds a bit of interest, but I did have to separate one arm from the other, so it didn't appear on both arms. So with my character all set up, I brought in an armature. This is just a basic rigify armature. It really does make rigging nice and simple. I delete the face bones and just push the bones into position so they match up with the character. For things like the fingers and the hands, it's best to use snap to volume and then it will snap to the middle of the volume that you're hovering over when you grab it. It still does need a bit of tidy up, but it does work a lot faster. With the Rigify add-on, once you've positioned your bones, then you have to generate a new rig. That's a rig that has lots of complexity such as IK, combined with FK and you can really move and position your characters nice and easily. If it's not quite working out, you can regenerate the rig just by going back to your original rig, moving things around a bit and regenerating. Once you're happy with the rig setup, then you can parent your mesh or your character to their rig. I use automatic weights to start with and then tidy up as I see fit. There's always going to be quite a big issue around things like the helmet or the armor. And then you want to find a bone to parent it to. With Rigify, you have to show the deformed bones in order to see the bones that they're parented to. So in other words, Rigify has lots of control bones and they control the deformed bones, which then controls your character. So when you're messing around with any weights, you have to choose the deformed bones as the bones that are influencing the movement of your character. It sounds a bit complicated if you've never used it before, but actually it's quite simple once you get used to it. For the sword, you can just parent that to the hand bone, the deformed bone that is the hand bone, and then the sword will move with the hand. I actually did something slightly different in the end. I parented the sword to an empty and then the empty to the bone. That gave me a little bit more control. It's tough to describe why that's the case, but it is much easier. It gives you a little bit more control and it gives you the ability to move the sword independently of the hand bone. Unfortunately, I forgot to press record on the animation process, but you can see the final animation here. It's very simplistic. It is only for a website as an animated GIF. So I'm very pleased with the results and how fast the whole process was. If you've got any thoughts or questions, then do comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.